given credit for his demise. So that's where the three aircraft come from. What were you thinking when he had you in his sights? I thought I was dead. I, uh, I was really quite frightened. And, uh, you know, uh, all of my, I guess, what is natural is my bodily functions said, you know, started letting loose and that type of thing. And uh, uh, I, I, I I thought I had had it, but uh, it's, it's just... Uh, the uh, fate and uh, the luck of the draw that uh, uh, the sky over-controlled and that type of thing. But huh. uh, it was frightening, very, very frightening. Were you uh, released to take out potential targets like this in other missions, or was this the only one where you had that ability to target German fighters? So- uh, did not target German fighters. As I said before, what we targeted was... Uh, Strafing opportunities, oh, such yes. as uh, moving targets uh, uh, on the ground, you know, railroads, uh, uh, barges on the rivers, uh, 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 vehicular traffic on the highways, and that type of thing. Uh, and that mission, when you took down the three German planes, I believe one of your other fellow airmen's name was uh, Walter Manning. Um, That's correct. And when you returned to the base safely, what did you think happened to him when he didn't initially return? Well, when he did not return after uh, a few hours, I knew that uh, he did not have enough fuel to go ahead and uh, stay up uh, that long and that he must have gone down. And uh, it was not too long after that. And I would say uh, maybe... Uh, I don't know how long, but uh, uh, a week or so, or maybe a little longer than that, that uh, he was declared missing in action. And then after another period of time, uh, he was uh, assumed to be uh, uh, be a casualty. Uh, as, as far as that's concerned, is that he, he never showed up again at that time. And it wasn't until about uh, four years ago that a couple from Austria came over to visit me in my home here. And they explained to me that they were on a research mission as far as the flight that I was on on April 1st of 1945, where uh, Manning uh, went down, and they were researching because they believe that uh, he had gotten out of his plane to uh, uh, and enabled to uh, parachute out of his plane, but that uh, uh, three days later, uh, they suspected that he was uh, uh, taken by a mob and hung from a uh, lamp post in uh, Wells, uh, near Wells, on Lenz, uh, Austria. Uh, they did more research and they were able to go out and find some witnesses who provided depositions and that type of thing. And uh, finally, they uh, had all of the evidence and proof that uh, Walter Manning uh, met his demise as a result of being lynched uh, by a mob. Hmm. Uh, Just last uh, 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 April 1st of uh, of, uh, 2018, and uh, just a year ago, I was invited by the... uh, or the Austrian government to come to a uh, commemoration that they had arranged for uh, Walter Manning. Evidently, they had uh, felt some uh, guilt uh, in uh, his demise as a result of the population taking the law in their own hands and uh, uh, lynching uh, Manning. And uh, they asked me to come over to uh, Austria uh, to the commemoration, which I did. Mm. And I went along with uh, 
my daughter, and I must say that the Austrians did a fantastic job as far as the memorial for Walter Manning was concerned. Uh, uh, I would say that people are comparable to their chief of staff of the Air Force was there. Their comparable chief of staff of the Army was there. Uh, uh, a number of diplomats were there, their ambassador uh, for the United States was there. It was, uh, you know, almost embarrassing because uh, he had not gotten this uh, uh, commemoration uh, in in the States here. And here it is, a former, uh, you know, enemy uh, uh, country uh, turns around and uh, gives this type of uh, salute uh, to him was uh, just absolutely uh, a wonderful thing on on their part. Thank you for sharing that. That does show that it matters to acknowledge wrongs in the past to to the survivors. In in terms of the lynching, was it because the population had a hatred against what they thought were bomber pilots, or was it racial, or was it a mixture? What do you think was the reason for that? Scott, I believe it was a mixture. I really do. And uh, because I, I, I do have some papers that were shown when they, uh, anyway, I have these papers that uh, in, they're in German, but uh, they went on to mention the black pilots that had flown over their country and that uh, uh, they should be lynched. And uh, this is what they would do in the United States there. And uh, that would be the, uh, just and deserving thing that uh, they should get. However, uh, they had also done the same thing to a large number of white pilots from this country. They had done the same thing to South America, I mean, South African pilots. They had done the same thing to New Zealand pilots. They had done the same thing to English pilots. And they had done the same thing to Australian pilots. In all, there were something like uh, a hundred and f- well, fifteen hundred went down in uh, uh, in Austria, and a large number. Uh, I, 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 I don't have that number at hand right now, but a large number uh, were either lynched or uh, summar- summarily uh, executed. Uh, by the civilian population. And uh, sir, I'm curious for you and your fellow crewmen what you thought about that, because I've read accounts of World War II pilots in the Pacific theater or B-52 pilots terrified of going to Japanese internment camps because there was special punishment for B-52 pilots for bombing raids. For you and or other crewmen, were there ever any worries like that of not only being shot down, of course, that's persistent worry, but then falling into the hands of the population like this? Well, we, uh, I would say no, and the reason uh, being is that uh, I think that the uh, information that was being fed back to us from headquarters uh, uh, did not mention what they knew about the uh, executions that were taking place. But uh, looking back, I can say now, that uh, certainly I can understand a uh, bombing raid taking place uh, over some town and uh, uh, the collateral damage or killings that's done, you know, the family members who are killed and that type of thing is that uh, they're not pretty amenable to uh, look at the uh, Hague rules of justice and things like that if it happens to be you know a member of your family or something like that and uh and uh so i'm i'm not i'm not that surprised to find out that uh uh, that there were a number of these uh executions that that took place at the time like that can you describe uh when you're in the midst of these 43 missions you and other airmen beyond worries about what would happen Stronger than that was your motivation to continue fighting. So what was the feeling like in the midst of those missions? And what would you say motivated you and your fellow airmen to continue fighting despite these dangers? Well, this this was our duty. We felt the duty, you know, the, uh, the, the, the strong 
we were inculcated with the uh, uh, duty and performance uh, as far as our job was concerned there. And, uh, 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 you know, we, we, we never thought of, or I never thought of uh, shirking that duty or anything like that, is that, uh, you know, this was required of me. I was trained to be a... Uh, uh, a fighter pilot. I was trained to uh, be a combat pilot, and uh, and uh, I I performed in combat as uh, as best I could without reservation. And before you left the service, I understand you won the top gunnery competition. Uh, was that you individually, or was that your team? Could you tell me about that? Three of us. There were three of us on the team there, and uh, this was uh, after we had come back home. This was in uh, May of uh, 1949. Oh, okay. This is a few years later. Yes. And it was then the commanding general of the uh, Air Force, uh, Hoyt Vandenberg, decided that he would resurrect a uh, uh, a game that uh, was uh, that they had prior to World War II. And I would say that uh, for sake of brevity there, I'd say it was akin to what you see in the movies about Top Gun. And, you know, <laughs> that was a, a Navy a Navy movie, but it was about the same thing. It was to go ahead and select uh, a, a team from each of the fighter groups in the country there and have them meet uh, at uh, Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, uh, over the desert in uh, Las Vegas, and in the case of the 1949 gunnery meet, it was three members from uh, each group, fighter group in the United States. Uh, the uh, they at that time, you know, we had we were getting a fairly large force of jet aircraft, so there were 12 fighter groups that. Uh, uh, were in this uh, fighter gunnery meet, and uh, uh, five of these groups, five uh, groups, were in what's called a pro- pro- propeller division, and the others were in a jet class there. So the propeller division, it was uh, P-51s, P-82s, and uh, uh, I forget what other... P-61s, I forget what other, other aircraft they had. But anyway, uh, there were six within the propeller division, there were six uh, exercises that we went through. There was aerial gunnery at uh, 20,000 feet, aerial gunnery at 10,000 feet, skip bombing, dive bombing, uh, panel gunnery, and... Uh, I forget, oh, rocketry. And uh, 200 points was scored for, for each, each of those uh, events. And uh, out of the uh, five fighter groups in the country, uh, the 332nd fighter group uh, won the event. The F3 pilots won the event. And uh, uh, I, I, I think we could all, all say as a result of that, uh, integration took place in the Air Force just one month after that. And I think that was sort of a proving ground that uh, the African-American pilots were uh, as good as any of the pilots. They were average as far as all the pilots are concerned. And as far as this fighter gunnery meet is concerned, they they came out to be uh, the winner's superior and why that happened, I would say, because of the uh, training that we were getting in the tactical air command at the time there. So I wouldn't say that inherently that a black pilot or a white pilot is any better than one or the other because of their skin color or something like that. I think I think that in our case, it had uh, to do with the training uh, that we were getting. Hey, everyone. Scott here. One more brief word from our sponsors.
And I don't want to skip over those years after the war ends and while you're still enlisted. Those are big events when that happens uh, as a result of desegregation. Uh, so could you tell me about your time in the service 